you know that the word for plagiarism comes from the Latin word for kidnapper? So essentially, if you break it down to its roots, plagiarism means stealing something that belongs to someone else and trying to pass it off as your own. Plagiarism can take many different forms, like if you were to copy and paste from a website without properly citing your work, or if you were to turn in somebody else's work and claim it for your own. Let's just see. I think this looks like my work. Or even if you resubmit work that you made for another class, to a different class without checking with your instructor first. All of these can result in a charge of plagiarism. Sometimes you don't even mean to do it. It happens because you don't know how to cite a source properly or are unaware of a certain rule. Plagiarism doesn't just happen inside the walls of college. If you recognize this guy, then you may already know where I'm headed with this. Vanilla Ice, a.k.a. Rob Van Winkle, had a huge hit in 1990 with his single Ice Ice Baby. However, there was something hauntingly familiar about the opening bass line. Let's play the first few seconds of Vanilla's song. Okay, now let's listen to a familiar song by Queen and David Bowie that was a 1981 song called Under Pressure. So if you were Queen and David Bowie and just happened to be sitting there in 1990 when you heard the opening of Ice Ice Baby come on, can you imagine how you'd feel? Cheated? Ripped off? Really, really mad? Keep in mind that their song came out in 1981 and Vanilla Ice came out in 1990. Vanilla Ice didn't even so much as mention them in the liner notes. Queen and David Bowie did end up suing Vanilla Ice and later settling out of court for an undisclosed and probably very large sum of money, and Vanilla Ice had to agree to use the correct licensing for all future releases of his song. But it just goes to show you plagiarism doesn't just happen inside the walls of your college, it can happen anywhere. So poor Vanilla had to pay a lot of money when he got caught plagiarizing, but what are the consequences if you plagiarize a Harrison? Plagiarism is among the most serious academic offenses at Harrison College and can result in some pretty harsh penalties, including counseling, failure of an assignment or course, and suspension or expulsion from the college. So how do I avoid all that, you may be asking? First, you need to learn to give credit where credit is due. A class assignment should be a personal discovery of new information. Much of the information that is new to a student was first expressed by another person. While it's perfectly acceptable to quote and paraphrase the words and ideas of experts or other researchers, making sure to attribute those sections of your work to that other person is key. Next, you need to be able to break down what is common knowledge and what is not. Information that most people know or could easily know is common knowledge. You don't have to cite common knowledge, but you do have to cite information that comes from another source that is not common knowledge. Let's look at some examples of common knowledge versus specific knowledge you'll need to cite. So you'll not have to cite the location of a city or business such as Boise is the capital of Idaho, but you will have to cite a source for statistics about that bis city or business, such as the city plans to install 725 LED streetlights. Professional titles of public figures are also common knowledge, even if you didn't know that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is David Cameron. Don't worry, I didn't know that either. But the fact that he supports shared parental leave would need to be cited. Please contact your instructor or librarian for more information. If you've decided that a statement or a piece of information is not common knowledge and you need to cite the source, you must decide whether to quote it directly or paraphrase. To quote, you'll need to take the exact words in identical order and add them to your writing, putting quotation marks around the sentence or statement and including a proper citation. 
Many times, students run into trouble because they fail to cite the information that is paraphrased or reworded. Be sure to include a proper citation when paraphrasing. Even if you quoted the author at the top of the paragraph and cited it properly, you still need to remember to include a citation if you add a paraphrase later on in that same paragraph, even if it's from the same author. I know, it seems silly, but it might seem clear to you, but how else is the reader going to be able to tell when you switch from your ideas to those of the author you're paraphrasing? When you paraphrase, you use the thoughts of another person, but you rewrite it in your own words and style. You do not need quotation marks, but you do need to cite the source. Here's an example of how you can paraphrase instead of using a direct quotation. It still includes the appropriate citation. Writing your assignment with proper citations is also important because it shows your process of learning. Think of your written assignment as a roadmap for other students wanting to take the same journey that you took. Your assignment should include citations that another person reading it could easily find every quote and idea in their original context, in the same way you did. Now that you're familiar with the term plagiarism and its importance, please continue on to the tutorial on APA writing style to learn how to properly cite your sources. Please see some of these relevant handouts for more information.